Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for hanging on. There are there are 90 people here right now, and uh, we really appreciate you coming to this event. In this next session, Tomash will be talking about the contribution process to RHEL via CentOS Stream. There is some overlap between this session and the previous one, but he'll be taking a slightly different angle on it, and it'll also give you an opportunity to ask the questions that you didn't ask in the previous session. So without uh, further interruption, I am uh, pleased to introduce Tomas, who will be taking us from here. OK, hello, everyone. Sorry, I had it open twice, and I was getting I was hearing Rich twice, so it was really confusing, and I realized it after. So I had to close the other window. Uh, OK, so we can start. So hey, I'm Tomasz. Uh, I work as an engineer for Red Hat in the Linux engineering group. I'm the product owner of Packet Project. Uh, in our project, we are trying to get downstream feedback into our upstream projects, which means that if you are working on your projects on GitHub or GitLab, you can get RPM builds of your project in Fedora or CentOS Stream, and then you can get these changes via RPMs we tested. So if you are interested in this, please check out Packet. It's packet.dev, and will be lovely to have you and work with you. Uh, OK, so my talk is uh, called, like, everyone can contribute to RHEL. And you already heard from both Brian's that you can do that. So this talk will be only about contributions. I won't talk about anything else. And you already heard a lot, to be honest like how you can do it. So I'll try to or elaborate a little bit. And this talk will not be very long for, for that say. And before I start, I wanted to tell you a funny story. So for today, I was actually dreading this a little bit because I had a dentist appointment and I had to pre-record my talk because of that, because I thought that I wouldn't be able to speak, but I'm, which I'm really thankful to my dentist to do a good job. So I pre-recorded it yesterday, and now I, I'm not even using it because I realized that Brian already said a lot, which I said in my talk. So I quickly changed a lot of slides in the last 30 minutes to make it uh, like to tell you something new. So you can see there'll be plenty of mistakes in the slides, or I, I didn't have practice, like a lot of practice time. So please bear with me. So, as I said, I really hope that you listened to Brian's presentation, which was very good. He, uh, like both Brian's, they did very good overview of what we are planning in CentOS Stream 9 and how we are in CentOS Stream 8. So I'll try to follow up a little bit from our perspective. Uh, okay, as you already heard, uh, we'll have all the repositories on GitLab. So right now we are working with GitLab to set this up. Uh, you could already see uh, uh, a repository, how it looks, and I, I'm I'm really excited that this will be available in coming weeks. Like this will be such a like such a change. And contributing to RHEL or via CentOS Stream will be as easy as opening a merge request. Like for CentOS Stream nine, like this is our plan, and I'll try to pursue it during this via this talk. For eight, it will be slightly different. We'll. Uh, like we won't be able to do the same thing with nine and I'll talk about it later. Uh, so the contributions that will be like standard open source contribution, which means that you write your code locally on your laptop and you send it to the upstream project. In this case, it will be CentOS stream, either eight or nine. And then there'll be maintainers of the particular package and they'll pro uh, provide you a review which means that they will either like the code and will be able to merge it, or they would say that like they don't want it for specific reasons. And so it's standard open source contribution process. There'll be CI hooked into the contributions. So you like if you just only want to know if certain changes would work, you can just open an MR and see if the tests are passing. Like you don't need even mean it as a real contribution. And I think this will be a regular use case, like to just trigger the CI. And as I said, maintainers will decide what's going in and what isn't, because they are maintainers. Like 
they are responsible for the particular package or project. And if you are just dumping some code, which you don't want to care about on them, like they will probably detect this and they will refuse it. So like standard open source contribution process. And opening issues is actually contributing to the link you can see on the slides. That's actually linked to our Red Hat Bugzilla uh, for the CentOS stream version for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So you can just open a Bugzilla there and you can even browse. There is many other issues there. Uh, which like people already dot, done contributing. And as Brian already said, kernel development will be completely open as well. So as you probably know for uh, seven and eight, like everything is hidden within Red Hat, like how kernel is being done. And all you can see is just one giant patch file, like being dumped into the upstream kernel sources. And that's going to change. With nine, you'll be able to see every change being done, every commit, every patch or rebase. So that will be pretty cool. I'm actually really excited about that. I, I we are working with kernel team on this, and they are very smart. And like what they were able to achieve with the new open workflow, it's so impressive. Uh, okay, so there will be two ways how you can contribute code to CentOS Stream. Uh, the first pl uh, the first place, the natural place is via this git. And if you, are, if you know our operating systems, Fedora or CentOS Linux or CentOS Stream, uh, you probably know this git. So it's a place where we are storing files, how to build packages for the distribution. And here is an example, and I'll guide you through it. But like be uh, based on the names I've seen in the chat, I know that all of you are familiar with this, but just for the record. so. Here we can see a repository with only a handful of files, how to build Python 3.9 for uh, CentOS Stream 9. And as Brian said, this will be public in a couple of weeks. So uh, this is just a screenshot of that so far. So it will probably be different in those few weeks. So in there, we can see the main thing, which is the spec file. Like this is the main recipe, how to build a package. Then, then we see some additional uh, files or sources, which are stored somewhere in the file system as the package gets installed. And then we see a bunch of downstream patches, which usually, I mean, they're downstream patches, so they're either pulled from upstream or like they are needed uh, for sake of our distributions. And one additional directory is this, and that's where the functional tests are being stored. And these tests are also being run when the merge request is being opened. So you can also contribute to tests or see what tests we are running. So that's, that's pretty awesome. And there'll be another way how you can contribute. So, so far we are calling this source git, like we have this git so that we will have source git, like with working with real sources. And to be honest, I don't like the name very much but that's what it is so far. Naming is really hard. So if you have a better idea for a name, I would love to hear it. But so far, I sourced it. And these, uh, these repositories will be stored in namespace called SRC, which is very short and it's definitely shorter than source git and makes more sense. And there'll be real sources. So in the previous slide, you could see there was just like a handful of files. And one of those files actually is uh, contains a hash of the tarball for the upstream tarball for the particular release. But here in the source git or SRC repositories, we'll have complete sources, everything. So it will be much easier for everyone to work with these repositories. So if you want to open a PR, it will feel the same as if you were opening it against upstream. And that's what I really love. And the, like the other thing is that you can easily pull commits from upstream and backport them for the particle version and open an MR. And I'm expecting that maintainers will be doing this a lot because right now with this Git, they like they if they cherry pick something from upstream, they then need to figure out a way how to create that patch file so that fits well for our version and that's just nightmare. But with these source git repositories, it will be trivial. Like you will just cherry pick it and if there are conflicts, Git will prompt, you can resolve it. And, and you would have a commit. And then this commit will be actually used to generate a patch file uh, when we are going to build from this Git. So with this, we are not trying to ditch this Git for good. I mean, 
maybe in future, but certainly not right now. So we still want this Git to be the authoritative place to do builds. Like that's that will be the database where you can see what like what builds were being done and like what's in the distribution. And these source Git repositories are meant to be just for development or like for integration of the changes into the distribution because you'll be working with source Git and that I'm sorry, it's sources with like real sources and that will be much easier than doing this in this Git. Uh, yeah. So if I talk about a little bit what you can see on the picture, uh, I hope you can see it. Like it's pretty small, my monitor. So I hope you can see it better than I am. But uh, in the bottom part, when the blue arrow shows upstream git history, that's actually upstream git history. That's just like what we did. We just git fetch upstream up to the 3.9 uh, release. And that's the last upstream commit. And the commits on top are downstream, uh, like pretty similar to what we are doing with this git. And what we are adding there are all the files from this git repository, which means spec file, initial sources. And uh, on top of that, we are applying all the downstream patches. So in here, you can see that patches are actual files. Uh, I mean, actual git commits, not files. So when someone is contributing to this repository code change, uh, like in the review process, you would be actually reviewing actual code, like not patch files, which you are, which we all have to do in this Git right now, which is really a horrible experience, but that's how things are. So in here, you would be reviewing actual code and you could actually see the code uh, in Git via commits. Uh, we have tooling in the background, the package project, as I was speaking in the uh, beginning, we are using that so that we are able to convert those git commits to actual patch files. And then we are able to generate some like a this git repository and hand it over to this git and do production builds. So this is what we are planning to do. And right now we are like closing out with the implementation and just, uh, working with uh, other teams in Red Hat to try out this workflow and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. So I actually covered slides a lot by spending the time on these pictures. So in CentOS Stream 9, we'll have these source repositories with actual upstream Git history. We are going to work with Red Hat maintainers uh, to set them up because it's actually not that trivial to set it up. I mean, we have tooling to automate it, but there are still cases where it just can't be automated. And the main offender is uh, conditional patches because it depends on like in which environment you are uh, like the environment is important like if you are doing it on Intel and there's conditional patch for ARM like it won't get triggered so that's a problem and so that we are, so we are working with the teams to try to set it up uh, yeah and as I said like these repositories will be the place where uh, maintainers and like everyone would be able to contribute and like this is the place to do the integration of the change into the distribution uh, okay so that's nine uh, let's talk about eight it is different as you heard from Brian and the difference in eight is that uh, like rel eight is still upstream and we are picking changes and moving them to center stream eight uh, and because of this, we couldn't do the same thing. And like, it would be nice if we would have to be able, like if we were able to do this, but sadly, because of this, eight is different and it's really hard to like change the change, uh, how things work in the middle of the development process. So the way it works in eight with these source repositories is that they are being created from source RPMs, which means there is no upstream Git history. Like it's only just a single commit representing the tarball and then all, all the changes layered on top. Uh, we actually worked with several maintainers who said like this is beneficial for them and probably even has more value than having the upstream history. And usually the case was that uh, when the upstream Git history has different content than the release tarball, 
And that's usually the case when there is some code generation being done, meaning that when there is an upstream release, the upstream project runs several scripts, create the tarball, and puts the generated files in there. So maintainers said like, like actually having upstream git history is useless for them because like the changes or the files are usually not even present or like they don't care about it. So that's what we have for eight. And as Brian said, we are very close to showing you all these GitLab repositories and that's what we are planning to do as well. So as soon as GitLab is ready, we are going to push all the repositories for, for these sources there. So they'll be available for contributions. Uh, the way this would work is that, like you can open merge request here, the same as nine, except that our automation, like in the background, will create a bugzilla and like it would need to go through this like current uh, rel development process via bugzilla internally. And then sooner or later, it would end up in the CentOS Stream 8 Compose. Uh, so I hope that's clear. Uh, okay, we can have a, I have an example here, how, how this works. And I picked DNF and this is still uh, the Pegure interface, uh, because as I said, we still don't have them, these repositories on GitLab and hopefully we will have them soon. And this is even smaller, so I hope you can see it. And what you can see, the bottom commit is just one commit where the uh, DNF upstream tarball is being unpacked. And then we have several commits to add the config file, add spec file, and all the other sources. And then we are applying patches. And the way we implemented updates for this, and it was actually really tricky to be done, uh, meaning that when there's a new build being imported into CentOS stream this git, like we need to like get it. And we implemented like really complex git magic sorcery, uh, like how to apply it so that the history would look decent. Uh, but you can see there are some duplicate commits and some of them are usually even empty because like none of, like nothing changes in there, but that's the best we could do. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's not the worst, it's not the best, uh, I would say it's kind of okay, <laughs> but that's how things are. So if we have ideas how we could improve the Git history here, like I, I would love to hear it, but when we try to, like, we try to experiment that we would only incrementally apply, uh, do the updates so that like real new patches would only show up, but that's never worked. So we always had to recreate the repositories pretty much and save several commits so they would like they wouldn't be there but uh it's still like there's still some duplicate ones but again uh like these repositories would contain real sources so that you would not need to touch this git or uh yeah need to figure out like how to do the contribution there in here you can really just change the sources change the spec file commit it change the mr and you're done Okay, uh, so this is, we are almost at the end and I can see some comments in the chat. So I'll try to address them after the presentation because I can't do two things at, at once. Uh, so last content slide is that we already received a bunch of contributions for CentOS Stream 8 and I'm, I'm really thankful to everyone who contributed. That's really impressive. And here is like very short list. And some of them are just bugzillas where people would try CentOS Stream 8 on their laptops or on VMs and then r run into some issues. And what I'm like, when I was thinking about it, I realized that like some of these would probably be released, like if it wasn't for CentOS Stream. Like, thanks to CentOS Stream that we are able to continuously provide new packages. Like, we were able to discover some of the issues earlier than they would actually be released with RHEL. Like some of these would actually be raised with RHEL, but if it wasn't for CentOS Stream. So this is really great that we were able to fix them so much easier. And some of these are actually real uh, code changes. Some even done in the upstream, then in CentOS Stream, and they then they were merged into RHEL. Like that's, that's very nice. And this is the last slide of my presentation. 
Uh, so can anyone help me out if there are some in, uh, questions? Yeah, the first question that we have is from Javier, who asks, how is CI going to work? Will it be done only via GitLab, or will it be possible to plug other systems uh, for third-party CI? Uh, that, that's an interesting question. So we have a dedicated team who is working on CI. We actually have two teams who are working on CI. And I don't know all the details, to be honest. And we, OK. We are actually not going to use the GitLab CI directly, as far as I know. Uh, the CI will work very similarly how it works in Fedora. So if you try to contribute to Fedora and look how CI works in Fedora this Git, uh, it's going to work pretty much the same for CentOS Stream. And for the question, as far as I know, internally, we have also external CIM system being plugged. So I know that it's uh, possible, but since I'm not from any of the CI teams, I can't answer that. So I uh, I suggest reaching out to the Fedora CI team because there's the same team who is work who is gonna work on the CentOS Stream CI and ask them the question. The next question that I saw was from Mahan, who asked, is SourceGit available for all packages that go into CentOS Stream or just a selection of them? Uh, thank you, Mahan. That's, that's a good question. So for eight, we are trying to make it available for as much as possible, but converting from source RPMs into the Git repository, like we've hit so, so many weird bugs that it's just like mind blowing. So for eight, we are trying as much as possible. Right now we are at 2000 plus, so we are missing only a few hundred. Uh, but for nine, with the upstream Git history, initially there would be only a handful of packages. Luckily those big packages like systemd or glibc. And we are going to slowly add more and more as more uh, Red Hat teams will start using it. I did not see any other questions. If I have missed any, uh, please call my attention to them in the chat. Carl, is that a, a question or are you, uh, I see. All right. Well, um, thank you very much for this presentation. And thank you to everyone that has participated in the chat. Um, once again, I'll let you know that the videos from previous sessions are currently uploading to YouTube. That's youtube.com slash The Centos Project. And there's one already up there. In the next hour, we will hear from David Duncan about Centos Stream and EC2 Hibernate. And uh, we will see you here in about a half an hour. Please do join us in the hallway track or in the chat for further questions and just hanging out with the community. Thank you, Tomas. Thank you very much and have a great dojo, everyone.